First, let's pay homage to the lineage gurus, to the venerable Mang Liaoming, homage to Master Sakya Kong, homage to His Holiness the Sixteen Karmapa, and homage to Master Dupdan Darji, homage to the Three Jewels of the Altar. Homage to the main deity of the ceremony today, Amitabha Tathagata of the Western Paradise. Sumo, Tutan City Rinpoche, Tanzan Kato Rinpoche. and all the precious Dhamma masters, Dhamma educators, Dhamma teachers, Dhamma instructors, Dhamma assistants, directors of temples and chapters of all, from all over the world. And also to our precious VIPs today. Good afternoon, everybody. How do you do? So now it's 4.31. So I would like to ask, how much time do I have? So we are very fortunate. However time you would like to take, to speak, we would be fortunate enough to listen. But for our homa at the Rainbow Temple, usually it's ended already by now. Now I have to give Dharma talks and so much to talk about, I don't know where to start. Hmm. It's always not enough time. So in my life, from youth until now, I don't know how many ceremonies I've conducted. But still, up till now, I still don't have enough time. So, human beings always find it not enough time. So, it's very difficult to say. Well, just let it be. Today, we would like to talk about the Dharma practice procedure of Red Tara. So this Tara is one of the 21 Taras. And this deity is for performing Dharma rituals. So maybe you would f feel in Tantrayana, 
they is uh, performing uh, rituals, dharma rituals, but it also gives the connotation of some, like for purification, is to purify our own karma and other people's karma. And to alleviate uh, disasters is that to the gods of heavens, gods on earth, let, let we be far from all calamities, let all calamities abandon us, let all disasters turn into dust. This is for purification. And the other one is for enrichment. Is to increase your own benefits and to increase other people's benefits. That's also to perform Dharma rituals. And the other one is for magnetization. Because samsara is called the ones with the emotions. So this emotions or feelings is impossible to describe. It's a very amazing, marvelous word. But on this feelings, you want to uh, go smoothly according to your wishes. That's called the magnetizing uh, Dharma ritual. And the fourth one, the fourth kind, because very strange. People that we love always so far away, and yet people that we don't like are always together every day. We always see them every day. Whether when you're young, when you're studying, when you're getting married, or when you're pursuing careers, you're always together with those you despise. It's interesting, it's always like that. So that's why you want to perform this very special dharma to remove our own obstructions, our enemies and enmities. And this is called the subjugation dharma practice. And of the 21 Taras, Red Tara is the most important deity for performing this uh, dharma rituals, this worldly dharma rituals. So the deity yoga for Red Tara has also the beginning part, which is, includes the uh, homage, offerings, refuge, bodhicitta, uh, immeasurables, and uh, armor protection. Those are the seven parts of the uh, beginning part. Homage, offering, fourfold refuge, repentance, the four immeasurables, the bodhicitta generating, and armor protection. That's the beginning part of the practice. The seven parts. As a tantric Buddhist, we have to master all those. And then to the main part, there will be visualization. Visualize inside our heart, there is an ah sit syllable. At our heart chakra, ah sit syllable. That becomes a red moon disk in our heart. There is an eight petal lotus. And at the center, there is an ah sit syllable that transforms to become a red moon disk. And at the center of the moon disk, there is a sit syllable 
call tang tang it's a six syllable for 21 taras tang radiating bright light that becomes a red utpala flower or lotus blossom utpala is a kind of lotus blossoms at the center of the lotus there is a six syllable tang radiating light and then the practitioner becomes red tara that's the transformation first you visualize your own heart chakra there's an acid syllable that transforms to become a red mundus. At the center, there's a tongue acid syllable that radiates light and becomes a red lotus or utpala blossom. And at the center of the blossom, there's a red tongue acid syllable that radiates light and then you yourself becomes red tara. Red tara is with one head and two arms. Look at it behind me here. That's her look. One head, two arms, smiling, and the right hand is holding a hook, the Vajra hook, on being held on top of the knee, and the left hand is holding a red lotus blossoms, and the hand is in front of the chest, and the blossom is near the ear. And her legs, the left leg slightly extended, I mean the right leg slightly extended, and the left leg is folded inside, inward. Hmm? Left extended and right bent and then seated on top of the lotus and with layers of celestial garments. At the heart chakra, there's a character called three. There'll be a, a character three, which is the sit syllable of Amidabha at her heart. So that showed that red Tara comes or emanated by, from Amidabha Buddha. And at the brow chakra, there's an Om sit syllable at the brow om on the throat there's an ah character and at the heart chakra there's also a home character and at this time the practitioner has become red tara and in the space there's a wisdom deity red tara which descended and unite with the practitioner and in visualization you perform the Tara Mudra and the Tara Mudra is the same as Golden Mother's Mudra Tara Mudra is the same as the Golden Mother's Mudra and you empower yourself the ambrosia fills your whole body and all karma is completely eradicated and at the top of her head there is Amitabha Buddha and you recite her mantra after visualization do you recite her mantra You recite this mantra a hundred and eight times. Om Tare Tu Tare Sangtaroni She Soha. So, for each Dharma practice, you need to recite a hundred and eight times at least. But in order to generate your Dharma power, you have to complete 1.5 million, 1.5 million recitations of the mantra to generate great power and 500,000 recitations to generate a medium power and 100,000 recitation to generate small power. So the more you can recite the mantra, the better, and then you enter into samadhi.
and then you use the stopping and seeing method to enter into samadhi, which means if you have a running thought, you would recite pay to stop it. And then you visualize again that you are the red Tara. Visualize it clearly. And then if you have a thought coming, then you use pay to eliminate it. And then you visualize again with visualizing and stopping and to enter samadhi. And then when you sit in forgetfulness, then there's no need to visualization. That means you enter into empty nature. And after the samadhi, you perform this and turn the Vajra hook three times. Now Grandma is holding the Vajra hook. You don't have to be the same as mine. You don't need to hold the Vajra hook in your hand and everyone go, goes by it. Then you all will become rich. Not necessarily. Just visualize there's a Vajra hook on your hand and you turn three times. Turn to the right three times. Turn to the left three times. That's the three turnings. That's the formula, the key formula. So if you hook, hook, but you don't know how to turn, then the Vajra hook is the same as dead. But if you turn the Vajra hook three times, then the Vajra hook becomes alive. But you visualize the Vajra hook to turn to the right three times, to turn to the left three times then the Vajra hook becomes alive. This is extremely important. This is the key formula. You have to do this. And then, let me tell you, let me give you an example. If you want to perform purification dharma, in front of the red Tara, there's a clear cloudless sky. And in the clear sky, there is the home, sit syllable, home from the Oma home. And with the dot, the sun, the moon disk, the sun disk, the sun disk, the moon disk, and then the line, horizontal line, and then three hooks. And you know the sun disk is a round circle. And in the clear sky, there is a white home, sit syllable. And after you th turn three times, you use the Vajra hook, the visualized hook, to hook on the sun disk of the home. And if someone is sick at your home, or your loved ones, family members, and you want to eradicate their karmic sicknesses. Visualize the sick person. And the white home, sit syllable, becomes the dew drops drop by drop entered into the mouth of the sick person to fill his or whole body with the with the dews or the sweet nectar so that's the dharma ritual for purification if you have karma you also hook the white home and then transform to become nectar to enter into the person's body and all the karma becomes the black water expelled through the skin pores or insects 
so that inside this person's body is just all the white nectar. That's only for purification. So if you know this method, then you can apply. And the mantra is very long. You don't need to recite that long mantra. You can use the short one. That's all you need to recite. short mantra and then you use the Vajra hook to hook the white home character to hook the white home character from the space from the sky that's purification Dharma now you understand And for enrichment, it's even simpler. Raja hook. Turn to the right three times, turn to the left three times, and hook on the yellow home sit syllable in the sky. And the home character disappear gradually. And by disappearing, it would drop lots of money around you, of the franken bills, 100 US dollar bills. So you would be surrounded by money. It's like a well around you very tall around you, they're all your money. That's for the enrichment, enrichment dharma, to increase your benefits. So you can apply once you master this method how to increase your benefits to use the Vajra hook to hook on the yellow home and the home gradually disappear and the money would fall around you, lots of them. That's the enrichment Dharma ritual. And next is for the magnetizing, for love and respect. These days, many men looking for their uh, spouses and women also looking for spouses, the right spouses, and they couldn't find them. So you visualize the sky and you use this dharma and use the Vajra hook to hook on the red home with the same and disappearing gradually. And then Yeah Wang, how do you say that? So a very uh, pretty and charming lady appearing in front, in front of you 
as the home is uh, disappearing, is burning. But that's meaningless. It should be like the the great blissful heaven. They use embrace. So the practitioner would embrace the lady, and the lady embraces you. So it's like <laughs> it's like a, uh, if you find the right partner, then you would you would bump into the world. So this is the magnetizing dharma practice. Now you know that, yes. Nintong, did you say? So this is for magnetizing dharma. And the subjugation dharma practice. The same with the Vajra hook, turn three times. And then you hook a blue home in the sky. And the same, you burn the burn, the home sit syllable. What it means by burning is from the tail, it's burning all the way to the top to the sun disk and then the dot and then it becomes ash and nothing. But as it burns the ash, if there is an enemy that you despise and you want him or her to leave, to leave the position and when the blue home sit syllable burns to become ash, then the ash falls into the mouth of this person. And then you say, Pang. Pang is like the sound of a bomb. And then this person would uh, become ash, breaks to pieces. Then you need to bar to deliver him or her, which in has to bar to deliver. But don't be so bad. Just visualize that person to become ash, to leave his or her position and to walk out from the door. Just to leave his position. Carrying his guitar, wandering around. Then you can sit on in his or her place. That's subjugation dharma. Don't with the pang. Then that person will really break into pieces. That's for subjugation. So, with these four methods, you can improvise and be creative. How to visualize wealth to fall onto yourself, how to visualize the desired man or woman to come to you, and how to visualize to eradicate uh, disasters on yourself. So the home becomes the white nectar and entering into your mouth, then your karmic sicknesses will be gone. So this is called the performing dharma rituals. So now you know. But if I didn't teach you, mm -hmm. 
So these key formulas, you know, once pointed out, it's very easy to master. But if it's not told, that's impossible to know about it. Because these are the key formulas. So if I didn't tell you, you wouldn't know how to turn the Vajra hook. You don't know that you have to turn three times and to hook the home. You know what the home is? Home represents everything. Om is the sky. Ah is one. And home is everything. The space of the sky is zero. Om and Ah is one, and Hom, it becomes everything. So Hom represents everything. And you use the Vajra hook to hook on the white, or the red, or the blue, or the yellow, and they have functions of each of them. <coughs> and then you burn it, it either becomes the sweet nectar <coughs> or the yellow. ones or to become the gold, wealth and money or your enemies. So these are all the Dharma rituals. <coughs> and <coughs> if you don't perform the Dharma rituals, then you exit from the Samadhi and you recite with Amitabha Buddha as the head ornament with the Dharma power. Uh, to attain yogic response and the merit dedication and the hundred syllable mantra and exit from samadhi. If you don't perform the dharma ritual, then you can exit the samadhi and recite the praise. And the mantra should follow the root guru's uh, pronunciation or mantra chanting. <coughs> And then there's the she, sit syllable, whether it's the Tibetan or the Sanskrit, they're all the same. So that's the procedure for the Dharma practice. Oh, the red Tara is right here. This deity is the main deity for performing the four kinds of dharma uh, rituals for purification, enrichment, magnetization, and subjugation. So you need to practice this deity for this purification, enrichment, magnetization, and subjugation. And other deities only specializes on a certain <coughs> subject, but this deity can perform all of them. And from these four kinds, it can, it can continue uh, to be improvised to include all different kinds of dharma, many, many dharmas, rituals. So, Think about it. Is your house clean? Is the house purified? If it's not, you use this deity and then you use the Vajra hook to hook on the white home. And as the home is being burned, 
it radiates bright light inside your house and to eradicate all the negative energy. <coughs> That's for purification for the house. If you have disharmony at your house between father and son that don't get along well, siblings don't get along, you use this kind of dharma. Use the red light, the red home, and to become the red light, to fill the family, then everybody would be harmonious. Your family would be harmonious. Everybody gets along with each other. So that's the kind of transformation. If there is a tenant who's staying at your house and doesn't pay and doesn't move, and you cannot sue her or him because they don't have money and they don't pay the rent and they cannot leave, so you use this Vajra hook to hook the blue one, the blue home that transformed to become you dedicate the marriage so that that person would listen to me to my words that if I ask him to move then he would move and then the blue home is burning to become powder entering into his mouth So you place that person and the blue powder entered into his mouth. <coughs> and in the blue powder, there are letters that say, please move out. Yes, entering into his mouth. And then all of a sudden, he pack and move. So their methods, their ways. As you know, we immigrated to United States. First is your uh, residency status, and second is tax. You know, tax is very important. Most accountants would encounter that. If you know the person who is uh, performing the audit on your tax, then you use the subjugation dharma rituals. The red, the red, oh, magnetizing dharma. The red home sit syllable entering into his mouth. So that he would feel a love for you. That upon seeing you, he would be very happy. And then he would say, no need to audit, it's fine. So you can perform this magnetizing dharma ritual so that he would love you so he doesn't treat you as an enemy, that he has to make it hard for you, has to check on you. That you have to pay taxes for everything. And sometimes you're even imprisoned for it. So this magnetizing dharma ritual is very important, most important. So that he has some fondness toward you. And he would find that, oh, this is fine. There's no need to be so 
so hard or so strict about it, as if his eyes are uh, kind of blinded. So there are 108 kinds, not just for the purification, enrichment, magnetization, and subjugation. So a lot of these Dharma rituals are beneficial to tantric practitioners during their spiritual cultivation. If you want to go through the custom, the U.S. custom, and you're scared being checked, then you visualize the Vajra hook. And to hook the red and let the red powder be eaten by him. And then instead he would say, give me your phone number. Can we be friends together? And he would just let you pass every time. Always want to be your friend. And Bardo deliverance for your ancestors. So which Dharma ritual? Think about it. If ancestors still have karma, it's better to use the white home. Turning three times, and the home transformed to become lotus blossom, and the ancestors sitting on top of the lotus. And then it would, it would uh, be shot to the Western paradise, being reborn into the Western paradise. So this Vajra hook is very uh, useful. This hook, you can just use visualization. There's no need to hold one for real. Otherwise, everybody would be carrying Vajra hook coming to the ceremony. <clears throat> you, you're not so kind-hearted, Master Hui Jin. She said that she would hook me home. <laughs> you're not my cup of tea, you know? You know, you're like a, like a gourd, and the head is small and the body is big. You know, I see you as a gourd <laughs> to hook you home to teach you Dharma teachings. No way. I prefer to teach a charming and pretty lady. I will not teach you. So listen to this. Please don't have such a fantasy. Around Grandmaster, there are many Dharma protectors. It's impossible for you to hook on me unless I'm willingly, I, I am willing to be hooked. Like Hui Jin, please don't fantasize, there's no use. But if I see a beautiful lady, there's no need for her to hook on me, I would be hooked already. That's the real, that's for real. Recently, Grandmaster read the Dharma Talks transcription of X in 1997 and 98, and there are more in 98. And I compiled it into a certain style. She's very smart, very eloquent, really. Uh, 
you, we have to respect her because after reading her Dharma talks, I would crawl toward her. She is just so amazing, so formidable. The reason why so many people believe her. 1998, August 15, the Earth Society performed the uh, <coughs> Calamity Relief Tara Homa. And after reading it, I noticed there is a certain, there's a certain uh, style. First, today I didn't say that Amitabha Buddha would descend or the Red Tara descended, but for her, every time the main deity of the Homa would descend and would become buddy buddy with her very, very close, and then they would talk intimately. The deity descend and talk a lot that the Bodhisattva said something and I said something and the Bodhisattva gave Dharma teaching and I also give Dharma teaching. Every time she said that, even Sakyamuni Buddha descended and buddy buddy with her held her hand and Sakyamuni Buddha said, extend your hand and she extended her hand and Sakyamuni Buddha held her hand and So they came for the wedding blessings, Sakyamuni Buddha and her. How could I mean, Sakyamuni Buddha held her hand intimately? But let me tell you, every main deity would speak to her, and she speaks to the main deity, and the main deity give Dharma teachings, and then X give Dharma teachings. So I called it uh, uh, inter interchange talk, like interactive talk. So the deity talked, and then X talked, and then the audience would find it very, very uh, cap captivating. How could you not listen? It's a Buddha, the Bodhisattva, who gives the talks. So, so the second mode, I mean, there's a, the second style or mode is that the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas who descended would always have some gifts to everybody. Like Sakyamuni Buddha would give his sariras to everybody to eat. So if you don't go to her uh, Dharma talk, then you don't have sariras to eat. And X was seated on the Dharma seat, opened her mouth, and a sarira was uh, thrown to her mouth. And she said it was very fragrant and sweet and so tasty. So not only her, but all the audience also ate the sariras. So gifts by Sakyamuni Buddha. And then Golden Mother also came. And she thought the female one has no sariras, but she didn't say that. So instead, there's the celestial birds who had the beat at its beak and feed everybody's. <coughs> the beats, the beats from the phoenix crown of Gold Mother. 
uh, crystal clear, very bright and sparkling like crystal balls and given to everybody to eat. And oh my God, even the beads can be eaten. So Golden Mother give that to give those to her. So the the celestial bluebird give the beads to everybody, including herself. So that's also the gifts. And the yellow jambala give the three open checks. Checks that you can fill the numbers as you like. Three checks. And the yellow jambala use her foot to seal the check, to sign the check. And now you can use it and you can just fill in the blank. Three checks. But don't be too happy because if you if you earn a lot of money, if you get the lottery prizes or you, your business flourish, then you have to give 90% of it to X. 90% has to be for charity work at the X Society. So what you have left is, so don't be so pleased about it. So that's what she said. Empty checks. So the yellow jambala used her foot to sign the checks. Oh my gosh, does she have athlete feet? And also the divine uh, duster of Golden Mother has been given to X. That if she wave it twice in front of the disciple, then the black smoke from the behind or from the body would be expelled. So she holds the invisible celestial duster and then she would uh, string it around and all the black smokes would disappear. And for the deity's birthday, the birthday cakes for the deity celebration, once you take a piece of that cake, you can eradicate uh, your karma of the three lifetimes. We don't even have this here. So for her, if you eat that cake, you can eradicate the karma of the three times. Oh my gosh, I will crawl. If it's so good, I would crawl over there. And then Golden Mother give her a huge longevity celestial peach and place it inside the Homa fire. So the Homa ash that time was extremely powerful that all the illnesses will be cured and then if you sprinkle it in the house, the house would be cleansed. And then if you bury it around the house, the house would be protected. That's just the Golden Mother's longevity speech. And then the well Tara give the invisible chanting beads to everybody. And because nobody could see it, so she took the real chanting beads and then she blessed it and she said that by my blessings the same as the well Tara's blessing. So now every one of you uh, can, can get one and your mantra chanting would gain power. And also the Matsu, the Matsu also descended. And then, So everybody would hold that uh, jade uh, tablet. And she said that Ma Zhu wears the phoenix crown. Actually, it's not the phoenix crown because Ma Zhu was holding the, uh, the he heavenly crown. 
so everyone of the audience would have that too. Because for the home at this time, we are in full concentration. And because of your generosity, the Tara give everyone 49 fruits. And each of them would would give 30 years of uh, virtuous merits. So by attending this ceremony of uh, saving the flood Tara, you would have 270, uh, 2,370 years of meritorious, meritorious work. But by performing 3,000 meritorious work, then you can become the heavenly God. But by attending the, this Tara who saved the flood once, you gain 2,370 years of meritorious work. So, you need 3,000 meritorious work to go to heaven. But the disciples there were extremely happy because by attending the Tara ceremony, they gained 2,370 meritorious works already, just once. And Tara explained, because the Changjiang River The flood killed a lot of people, so it was recorded for the past 3,000 years. There were so many people harmed, so that's why what we are doing today for the Homa had such great meritor merits. Actually, Changjiang doesn't just result in disasters, but it is also one of the river. So one is Changjiang, one is Wanghe. So that has marked the 5,000 years of China's history because people live following the river the river flow and they rely on the Changjiang and the Huanghe, the Yellow River and the Chang and the Long River. They don't just create disasters but they also have lots of merits. So the five thousand years of China's history were along Changjiang and Huanghe and they were the greatest uh, providers or uh, it's mostly due to their credits because the land alongside the rivers were the most fertile fertile and they have give so many famous people and capable people So Changjiang and Huanghe, these two huge rivers in China, the, 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 the Qinghai is, is green and the Yellow River is yellow and there is the gold dust-filled uh, long river or Changjiang. So my, my judge, my is a, the Dharma talks of acts is that the deity would descend, always descend, and then the witch would ask the deity and the deity speaks to acts and this is very enticing. And I would only say it's cannot, it's not 
trustworthy. It's not trustworthy. It cannot be believed because actually they were ghosts. They are not real because she doesn't abide by the precepts. And there are many examples about her breaching of the precepts in the book called Shi Gui, writing about ghosts. It's impossible that those were Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. She strived for fame, so it's impossible those were Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. She loved money, and she got lots of money from people, unlike Grandmaster, who never set the price or anything. Yesterday, during spiritual cultivation, there was a accountant that went there, and then they, uh, he killed himself, hang himself, and the mother too also hang herself to death, and the accountant too. The ghosts have hurt so many people. And this kind of stories happen to people from Seattle. Just when they once, and then coming home, she drove her car to the cement pipe and killed in the accident. She uh, didn't admit it, but people going there and they became pale and they, she has hurt people really badly. So how could Buddhas and Bodhisattvas descend upon such a place? Think about it. Use your brain. Think about it. So Buddhas and Bodhisattvas giving gifts to people at the ex society. Please don't be so pleased because all the gifts are intangible, so it's just based on her words. There's no reality to it. The one who lies, the master at lying and fabricating and creating bad things. So I would like to say that a real practice is the most important thing. So you get what you practice. That's most important. It's a real practice. Gifts, uh, all those gifts are useless. Whatever the Buddha said, all those words, I will write it in my articles too. There were so many weird things that she talked about. But she used the name of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, and because of the gifts, people are really uh, attracted to that. So that's why people love to, to hear those things. That's why we have this problem today. So think about it. When she 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 enshrined uh, the tablets of the ghosts all over the world at your temples, chapters, and any shrines secretly, without letting you know. Without letting you know. So there's no ethics here. Just this point alone already showed about her integrity. You go visit a temple or spiritual center or a shrine, whatever you want to do to that shrine. You want to ask for the permission, but she never did. She just do it secretly and just enshrine it at your 
uh, a city garba hall, a tablet for the, all the wandering ghosts. At the custom in Taiwan, it's only during the seventh month of the lunar calendar that we open the door to hell and to let the ghosts accept offerings and running around and then to have them return at the end of the seventh month, but not for her. She let the ghosts roaming around all year round because she placed the tablet here, so that means there's like a permission, like a tickets for the ghosts to go there. And by the ghosts roaming around the temple, the deities would leave. I thought the Sangta chapter in Florida, which is quite far, there shouldn't be any ghost tablets over there. It turned out there were 10 ghost tablets there. And they have the most. At Rainbow Temple, three tablets. At the Seattle Itzang Temple. Six tablets. That's the head temple. Six tablets. And Rainbow Temple, three tablets. And the Sangta Lichang Temple, which is far away, there were ten tablets. There must be people being harmed. So in Malaysia, for all the shrines there, please search carefully. Whatever the like animal spirits of the ten directions, ghosts of the ten directions. But the ten directions chapter of Hong Kong is also ten directional chapter. No need, no need. But she uses that for the ghosts and spirit tablets. And she also wrote the X Hall tablet and placed it at all over the place and called the director of the Sutta chapter and said, you have to invoke the five great gods and who are they, you know? That's the ghost. Xiaolin, Zhongchun Yi Lang, Zhongchun Yi Wu, Du Bian Yi Lang, Lin Liang Zi, Wang Qing Qian. This are the five heads of ghosts, and she called them the five gods. And she told people to invoke them. And people followed until they became really pale and weak. Either like the, the seventh, seventh master or become really dark and black like the eighth master which is like the eighth godly master from Taiwan. Let's not talk more about it. We're getting more and more upset. Let's share a joke. What time is it now? 5.30. A lady told the, the son of a rich person, let's uh, break up, and he asked why. And the lady said, because of your family. Why? I brought you to see my dad yesterday. And my dad said that he likes you. And she said, yeah, not just your dad. I also like your dad. I, I, uh, there's more guarantee if I become your mom.
frankly speaking. Okay, Master Lu has been teaching students and there's one that's that's oh my god. The reporter asks what reasons make you want to lose weight? And he replied, it was so hot and I had a heat stroke and fainted. And the reporter asked, oh, suffering from heat stroke and decided to lose the weight? No, because when they carried me into the ambulance, they, I heard them say, one, two, three, And still they couldn't lift me to the ambulance. One, two, three, one, two, three. So, tell Huijin, you have to lose some weight. Not your head. <laughs> but from your t bottom. During the ghost month, don't be afraid if you see a ghost, borrow some money from the ghost. Because this time of, of the year, talking about borrowing money, even the ghost would be scared. So if you encounter ex-ghost, you would say like, I want to borrow money from you, then the ghost would run away. There's someone, only made an offering of hatha to X. And X placed the hatha on her neck. And the ghost entered into her body. And from then on, the ghost stayed there. And that person is in Singapore now and her sisters are here and she's in Singapore and the ghost stayed with her and but Grandmaster now use a very strong power you know what's the, what, what strong power it was? I would told the ghost if you don't leave I would borrow money from you there's so many troubles more and more we found out the ghosts that they employed just make an offering of hatha and then she bestowed i mean she gave the hatha back to her and the ghost followed her home now wincy mosquito the old mosquito told the young mosquito They, they rather lose 10 cc the blood. They don't let us uh, get a little bit of blood. That must be bad blood. So mosquito bites can can uh, transmit uh, diseases. So not just taking the blood, the same with ghosts. So not just that it get to you, but it infect you so you can't live on. Not just trying to get your energy. So after the ghost gets all your energy, it would tell you in your ears, go die. Disciples from Singapore and Malaysia would talk to you, go, go die. Just be dead, go die. So the ghosts tell people to die. So ghosts are worse than the mosquitoes. Last night at 3 a.m., the phone rang and the friend said that 
stuff from the car was stolen. And I said, well, report to the police. And my friend said, it's not, well, it's not very valuable, but the steering wheel and the pedals and the brakes are all gone. And I thought, how come no thieves steal everything? So I wear my jackets and about to leave the house and then the phone rang again and the friend said and the friend said that oh I was drunk I was just sitting in the uh, passenger seat but the ghost from X steal everything If you're careless and you don't set protection, then the, they would steal everything from you. It's not so easy. It's really horrible. You can't take it lightly, lightly. This is not very funny. The first day at work, I got on the elevator with a young lady and she used pen to push on the floor number and then open and close the door and she smiled softly to me and I thought she's so afraid and and then when i use my finger to touch the number and i just knew that there's some uh, electricity do you want your kick response yes everybody likes to receive responses you go to the cemeteries and then you make a smoke offering. Then they would follow you home. Then you would start to have some, some responses. So you want these responses or experiences? It's very easy. You go to the X Society in San Francisco. It's very easy. Then there would be some, uh, some electricity, power shots. You would have some feelings. They also came for me, but now they don't dare to come anymore because I know how to catch them. This is joke. Well, this is Chinese, only meaningful Chinese. Differences between men and women. But there is a difference between ghosts and human beings. Please don't get in contact with the ghosts. Moreover, never worship ghosts because that would harm people. And, and you make it public, publicly employing the powerful ghosts. And people just employ like a small ghost. And Grandmaster never teaches anyone to employ the powerful ghosts. Even the small ghosts are not allowed. That's deviant practices. 
a lover was uh, sitting and chatting in the in the park and the lady asked uh, what gifts will you give me for Valentine's Day the same as last year and what did you give me and the man said oh the same as the year before and the woman asked and what was it and then the year before same as the year before and what did you give me the year before nothing because I didn't know you then so you know what X had given you is this nothing she just made it up she just made it up she lied that like for, uh, for a whole mass ceremony she said that she had this and that for you no the cake is still this cake it's not that the cake can eradicate karma from the three lifetimes three times the teacher asked why don't you go to school didn't go to school yesterday because my dad is in the hospital and seven days later the teacher asked so is your dad still in the hospital and Xiaomi said yes because his dad is a doctor at the hospital What a bread. That person is also. Okay, so that's it. Oh, money, Benny, home.